द रोहिंगा द रोहिंगा पीपल हिस्टोरिकली आर ऑल्सो टर्म एज द आर्कनीज इंडियंस एंड आर स्टेटलिस्ट इंडो आर्यन पीपल फ्रॉम द रखाइन स्टेट ऑफ म्यांमार they were an estimated 1 million rohingya living in myanmar before the 2016-17 crisis now on the 22nd of october 2017 the united nations reported an estimated of 603000 refugees from rakhine myanmar had crossed the border into neighboring bangladesh and since august 25th 2017 this number has increased to about 624000 all the way to november the 2nd 2017 and today reported on december the 6th 2017 the number has increased to about 625000 the majority of muslims while they are still a hindu minority described by the united nations in 2013 as one of the most persecuted minorities of the entire world the rohingya population are denied citizenship under the 1982 myanmar nationality law Now according to the Human Rights Watch the 1982 law effectively denies the Rohingya the possibility of acquiring a nationality despite being able to trace the Rohingya's history to the 8th century Myanmar the Myanmar government still does not recognize the ethnic minority as one of its eight national races they are also restricted from freedom of movement state education and civil service jobs the legal conditions faced by the Rohingya in Myanmar has been widely compared to the apartheid in many international academics analysts as well as political figures including mr desmond tutu a famous south african anti apartheid activist the rohingyas have faced military crackdowns as early as the year 1978 later on crackdowns in the years 91 92 2012 2015 and now the internationally condemned crackdown in the year 2016 and 17 Now the United Nations officials have described Myanmar's persecution of the Rohingya as ethnic cleansing. The United Nations Human Rights Envoy to Myanmar reported that the long history of discrimination and persecution against the Myanmar Rohingya community amounts as crime against humanity. Now there have been warnings of an unfolding genocide. Yang Hee Lee, the United Nations Special Investigator on Myanmar believes that the country wants to expel its entire Rohingya population now to give you a little bit of insider about where the Rohingya originate from the Rohingya maintain that they are indigenous to the western Myanmar with a heritage of over a millennium and influence from the arabs moguls and portuguese the community claims that it has descended from the people in the pre colonial arkanan and the colonial arkan historically these regions was independent kingdom between the southeast asia and the indian subcontinent previously rohingya legislators were elected to the parliaments of myanmar until persecution increased in the late 20th century now despite accepting the term rohingya in the past the current officials in the official position in the myanmar's government say that rohingyas are not a national race but are illegal immigrants from a neighboring bangladesh myanmar's government has gone as far as to stop recognizing them as rohingya and prefer to term them as bengalis rohingyas campaign groups notably the arkan rohingya national organization demands the right to self determine with myanmar now before the 2015 rohingya refugee crisis the military crackdown in 2016 and 17 The Rohingya population in Myanmar was around 1 to 1.3 million, chiefly in the northern Rakhine township, where there were 80 to 98 percent Rohingyas. So they had an entire stronghold where basically it was most Rohingya dominated. Now, since 2015, over 900,000 Rohingya refugees have fled to southeastern Bangladesh alone, and more other surrounding countries and other major Muslim-controlled regions. Now more than 100,000 Rohingyas in Myanmar are confined in camps for internally displaced people. Shortly before a Rohingya rebel attack killed 12 security personnel on August the 25th, 2017, the Myanmar military launched clearance operations against the Rohingya Muslims in Rakhine state that had left over 3,000 dead, many more injured, tortured, raped, and their entire villages and homes burnt to the ground. 
over 603,000 Rohingyas from Myanmar fled to Bangladesh and to many other surrounding countries. According to the Refugees Relief and Reparation Commission, about 624,000 Rohingyas entered Bangladesh until November the 7th of this year. The Rohingya population is also concentrated in the historical regions of Arkan, an old coastal country of Southeastern Asia. It is not clear where the original settlers of Arakan, the Burmese nationalist claims that the Rakhine inhabited Arakan since 3000 BCE and are not supported by the archaeological evidence. There has been an entire dispute as to do the Rohingyas belong in Myanmar or were they just travelers and settlers or nomads who just happened to be there and settled in the stronghold. There is a lot of historical evidence that points to the fact that Rohingyas have been there for a long, long time. Now, I'm going to point out some other facts to you guys. And that is, by the 4th century, Arakan became one of the earliest indigenized kingdoms in Southeast Asia. The first Arakani state flourished in Dhandiwadi. Power then shifted to the city of Vethali. Now, Sanskrit inscriptions of the regions indicate that founders of the first Arakani states were Indian and Arakan was ruled by the Chandra dynasty. Now, the British historian Daniel George Edward Hall stated that the Burmese do not seem to have settled in the Arakan until possibly as late as 10th century AD. Hence, earlier dynasties are thought to have been Indian, ruling over a population similar to that of Bengal. All the capitals known to history have been either north near modern Akab. Now, due to the coastline of the Bay of Bengal, Arakan was a key center for maritime trade and cultural exchange between Burma and the outside world. Now, since the time of the Indian Mauryan Empire, Arab merchants had been in contact with Arakan since the 3rd century, using the Bay of Bengal to reach Arakan for trade. So, this basically established the grounds as to where the Middle Eastern traditions and the Middle Eastern people started to make their move through the region. Now, starting in the 8th century, Arab merchants began conducting missionary activities and many locals converted to Islam. Some researchers have speculated that the Muslims used trade routes in the region to travel to India and China, a southern branch of the Silk Road connected in Burma and China since the Neoethelic period. Arab traders are recorded in the coastal areas of southeast Bengal bordering Arakan since the 9th century. Now, Rohingya populated trace their history to this period. That is basically the 9th century is where the first traces of Rohingya population arose. Now, besides locals converting to Islam, Arab merchants married local women, later settled in Arakan, and as a result of intermarriage and conversions, the Muslim population in Arakan grew. Modern day Rohingyas believe that they descend from these Muslim communities. So they date back to almost the 9th century. Now an estimate number of Rohingyas spread throughout the globe are as follows. Bangladesh with over 947,000. Saudi Arabia with 500,000. Myanmar with now less than 400,000. Pakistan with 350,000. Thailand with 5,000. Malaysia with 150,000. India with 40,000. United States with 12,000 and growing. Indonesia with 1,000, Nepal with 200, and Canada with 200. The Rohingya are facing something that humanity has faced once before, and that was ethnic cleansing on the ground in which an entire race of people, an entire community was attempted to be wiped out clean. I don't want, I don't have to remind any of you guys about what went down during the world wars. The significance of life and the importance of being treated equally as humans throughout the face of the planet is something that we should base our ethics on. Ethically, being a community of people who are so conjoined in the day and era of the internet that we can click onto a website and get information straight. If we choose to, we can make a difference even though we have not left our single apartment or have not left our community to get out of. But we're still helping someone halfway across the world. That happens today on this planet. And yet we are faced in a dilemma in which people are facing ethnic cleansing. People are being wiped out 
just because they are not the same as you and to expect these from people like Buddhists. Now, every single encounter that you have with Buddhism does not relate to any kind of violence. And when you come across things like this, it's, it's, it makes no sense. Everywhere you see, there are idols of Buddhists dictating peace. And yet we come across such ethnic cleansing in the face of the planet with ample amount of evidence. And yet people of the Myanmarese government are denying it. That no, this is not ethnic cleansing. This is not what we're doing. This is not our objective. We're dealing with threats. We're dealing with terrorists. Now they've gone as far as to not recognize Rohingyas as a part of their community. They call them Bengalis. Because the neighboring Bangladesh has a majority of Bengalis there. Now, I don't understand in 2017 how this is still something that is targeting and affecting so many people's lives. Families are getting displaced. I'm sure you guys have come across billions of videos and updates in which you've seen people crying, people being ripped away from their family. People losing their lives, their kids, their moms, their dads, their sisters, their wives. It's sad that you still have to think of a time that we thought was long gone. is very much still here. That the threat to humanity till date remains humanity. Everyone's freaking out about the AI. Everyone's freaking about North Korea. It seems like we need to fear ourselves first. It's us who's going to be the end of us if we don't pull our stuff together. We are all one. It's one race. We are one species on one planet. Makes absolute zero sense when radicalism comes into play. It's pointless. And it's as good as devolving into apes again. Stay informed. Spread the word. Peace.